Hello YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I think this must be the first time I've started a video underneath the macadamia tree, but today I imagine you can see why I've done that. We are in full flowering. It's the last day of August 2023 as I film this, and the trees here, they're not entirely in full bloom. You've got some racemes here that are sort of still greenish and others that are fully open and ready for pollination which are white and I don't know if you can see it in that dappled light but certainly as I take you around block one here you'll be able to see some of what I'm talking about the variety I have of trees here is a good thing to show you for the purposes of this video because you've got flowers open for pollination they'll be attracting bees they've certainly got lovely smelling pollen at the moment and you'll have other trees like this one I'm approaching now where the flowers are huge in number but not open yet uh, and the nice thing about oh, well, a couple of them are open if you sort of look deep enough but the nice thing about having that variety there is that you know there will always be some flowers on nearby trees open for the purposes of cross-pollination uh, because you don't get cross-pollination un unless those flowers are white and of course the bees are visiting them not seeing many pollinators around at the moment but if there was something that would attract bees this 835 here with massive thick racemes it's its first year really having a flower this 835 um, surely would be attractive to bees and um, uh, in answer to people who've, who've never been to a farm before yes you can smell the pollen it's a sweet smell um, I don't know how it is for people who suffer allergies I'm luckily not one of those people but if you have allergies to pollen generally you probably want to stay away from a macadamia farm right now if you don't have those allergies and you want to see something beautiful well look every every few trees here is sort of almost looks like a Christmas tree it's so dolled up with these flowers um, ready for pollination now farmers on average have sprayed in the last couple of weeks uh, and I'm in that club I've, I've sprayed against lace bug which is a little little sucking bug that sucks the sap out of the flowers not the pollen but the sap and um, you spray before the bees come around visiting because uh, the spray is toxic to bees if it hits them um, but if you get it before it hits them it protects the flower and doesn't interfere with the bees that's um that's what the better range of sprays does um, unfortunately diazinon which hangs around on the flower and just basically acts as a contact poison is bad for bees this is a massive racine tree it looks a little bit like an a variety but i can't be 100 percent sure whatever it is is it's it's fully open in flower but I'll show you an A4 later where it's sort of being a bit of a bit of a laggard it always is it's always one of the last trees to flower so um, apart from the pretty pictures and and you know being proud of what I'm looking at walking around the orchard um, what I'd like to tell you about today is a little bit of an update on a video I've done once before and that is a discussion of the world macadamia market and in particular where Australian macadamias go. Um, the Australian Macadamia Society does release some stats. They haven't been as detailed lately as they have been the, the last time I did this video but it's still worth discussing um, particularly in global terms. In global supply terms the forecast supply for this 2023 season is up three percent now um, while that sounds positive in the last 12 months it was up 24 percent so you know with all this new production coming online or an increase of only three percent does suggest that other factors are at play whether they be weather factors um, harvest factors or um, as, as certainly has been the case in australia um, farmers just not picking up their nut because the price got too low to make that economical so the Australian forecast was down, as I've mentioned in a recent video. China's forecast is down 10% on last year. And China being a major supplier now, that's quite significant. Um, South Africa's revised its forecast down, but overall its production is still um, forecast to be up by 12.8%. 
and the rest of the world we don't really have stats but you know bear in mind there are plenty of other countries that are active players including Guatemala um, Hawaii in the US um, Kenya those sorts of areas we haven't really got any detailed stats coming from those countries um, at the moment but globally they're, su they're suggesting this year's supply will be up three percent how does that compare with demand because supply and demand is really the factor that affects the price um, a lot and there's good news on that front but it's not all from the same places demand is actually up 13 percent so where is that demand being driven well the three big places are the US Japan and China and that's interesting particularly for Australian growers um, what they're actually demanding changes a little bit as well because the US for example likes, maca likes to import macadamias as kernel that is already processed for them um, China on the other hand is a very strong importer of macadamia nut in shell which it then processes itself and then sells on to customers in its domestic market possibly re-exports overseas um, and Europe is a, a, another one you put in the kernel basket uh, and as you know because they don't generally process nut and shell in the higher income countries so the Australian sales in terms of their exports of nut and shell um, to China have gone up by 9% but our sales of kernel to China have gone down by 9% now that may not be exactly the same number but it is sort of indicative of the fact that in response to the lower prices um, Australian exporters have just um, relied more on exporting the raw nut in shell because once you add the cost of processing the nut in Australia it doesn't become price competitive so we're exporting more sort of you, you might almost call it the equivalent of exporting iron ore instead of steel um, and so um, it's not entirely good news, um, certainly for the processors in Australia who do process in Australia, it's not entirely good news, although, you know, many of the processors do have processing plants in China or Vietnam. Um, but yeah, it was, that was interesting. But the other, um, other side of the equation is who is China buying those nut in shell from? Just last year, it was almost running neck and neck between Australia and South Africa. We were, um, you know, we were putting in just really just a tiny bit uh, shy of what South Africa was putting in. And before 2022, Australia was by far the biggest supplier. I, don't, I wouldn't I'd hesitate to use the word preferred because there was a lot of discrimination against Australian trade goods from, from some political disputes. But Australia was by far the biggest supplier of nut and shell. Now, in this last 12 months, our share of the Chinese nut and shell market has fallen from about 50% to around about 27%, just over a quarter in the space of one year. And South Africa has um, stayed at around 50% of um, China's imports. But, you know, bearing in mind that China is importing a lot more nut, China's imports are way up, even though they produce their own. They've got a massive local demand for macadamias, which is great. It's just that it's being supplied now, primarily from South Africa instead of Australia. Is that part of changing of the guard? Well, probably, um, because if you look at the figures, China's imports, which are about 51,000 uh, 51, tonnes, is nearly the entire Australian crop. So we couldn't supply all of China's needs even if we wanted to. Um, we supply many other markets and we have very loyal markets in Japan, Korea, um, other, other parts of Europe in particular, um, who, who like Australian macadamia nuts that come from the source. Um, and, you know, there are sophisticated markets where that matters more than simply buying a macadamia nut from any old ware. But, um, yeah, it's a very big change in the mix as far as China's imports are concerned. And um, 
it, uh, it means that the growing demand, at least at a certain price, is being picked up by suppliers of macadamias who have lower costs of production. And um, we need to work out, particularly in Australia, what we do about that, how we can increase our own production so that we can supply these large markets while remaining price competitive. And um, that's an ongoing challenge, but certainly one where, you know, if the weather conditions are right and other conditions are right in the market, we can actually do, we can actually do a better job and make ourselves some margin. Now, the other story, which is not really a good news story, is where demand for our macadamia, or demand for macadamias generally, have fallen. Probably wouldn't surprise you to know that Europe is one of those places. Europe's a troubled continent at the moment with the Ukraine war, uh, and like a lot of other Western countries, there is a big squeeze on the cost of living. So macadamias being a luxury food, uh, are not ideally suited to the times when you're looking at, you know, foods that people don't absolutely need or need as much as they should. Um, and so they don't buy them. They're more, a, they're more a discretionary purchase and interest rates are high across Europe and, you know, the concerns about the war are also high. So people leave their money in their pockets rather than buy luxuries. We get that. But the other place where demand has fallen even further is right here in Australia. That's a shame on a number of levels. Firstly, we consume a lot of our own crop. About 40% of what Australia makes, we eat ourselves. And obviously buying Australian, eating Australian, these are all good uh, politically desirable things, I suppose you'd say. Um, and selling to your own market has some advantages in that your nuts here doesn't need much cost in terms of transporting, storage, um, import tariffs, those sorts of things. But to go down 6% in our own country, you know, the cost of living pressures are very real and, you know, people will be resisting luxuries the same way that they are in Europe. But um, it really, I think, brings to the fore what the Australian retailers are doing to the macadamia industry and that is just by deciding to make a greater margin as the macadamia price falls. They're happy with selling fewer macadamias because the margin is, is now so great compared to the cost that um, you end up with more money overall and you don't have to buy so much from the farmer. And uh, I noticed that you know, despite the indications from the AMS that from about, you know, March, April this year, you'd start seeing prices fall because the supply contracts flip over to lower price contracts in about um, the middle of the year. Well, Harris Farm in my local area just put the price of raw macadamia kernels back up to $50 a kilo. And I just shook my head in disgust and thought, you know what, this isn't, this isn't working. Um, we're really not getting breakthroughs that would allow Australian consumers to consume more of our crop. What we're really doing is enabling the retailers to make a higher profit. And, um, uh, you know, you feel a little bit squished like a dairy farmer was in the days of a uh, dollar a litre milk, which basically forced a lot of milk producers out of the industry before the price came back up again. Um, look, the... Yeah, I may be wrong about this. I mean, the, the places like Harris Farm, I certainly look at their macadamia nuts and I'd say they're style zero or style one at the worst. And these are the whole kernel styles, which apparently the processors can't get enough of at the moment. Um, and it's the ingredient styles where the price is being driven down. Um, speaking of ingredients, though, there is some other positive news um, from the AMS. I don't know who keeps these statistics or how they measure them, but what they're saying is that new products that contain macadamias as an ingredient have risen by 16% after staying fairly flat for the last few years. So that's great. It means that people putting macadamias in biscuits, ice cream, the kind of products that don't need whole macadamias, but put them in as chips or, or chunks, 
um, they're they're doing something with with macadamias, particularly with the reduced price, and it's a positive development. Uh, in a recent uh, Mac Group discussion, uh, apparently Lint has been out to visit Australia, and they're doing a lot of interesting experiments with macadamia in Lint chocolate, which is one of the most famous suppliers of chocolate in the world. And uh, if that takes off, well, we could expect to see some of those ingredient style macadamias being snapped up to make some yummy chocolate products. And if you're watching this from Switzerland, can I encourage you to go bang on Lint's door and say, we want macadamia chocolate. And you've got every reason to because macadamias and chocolate are a very, very nice partnership. Right guys, well that's my update for the moment. There will be some more coming soon and I hope that in the meantime you have fun doing whatever it is you do. Bye for now.